Welcome again, saints. Let me pray for us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for bringing us together here again today for this Sunday school lesson, Lord, this Bible study. Father, I just uh, plead the name of Jesus over everything that's said and done here. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the season you have me in currently, Lord, uh, with your people. Father, I just thank you, Lord, wherever this video is found on whatever social media platform this video is found. Uh, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that... Uh, uh, Lord, did the, whoever your people just stop by, Lord, uh, they kind of not rob, just to spend a few moments, Lord, uh, listening to your word from, from me. Father, I just ask that as well, Lord, you just, uh, Lord, just embolden them in the ministry that you've called them to. And Lord, that they, that they take back, Lord, those things that people beat out of them, talked out of them, cussed out of them, or whatever it is, that quirk, that thing you put in them, that ministry, that idea, that gifting. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, saints, before we get started today, I'm just going to ask you to go down and subscribe right now to this channel. And also, I want you to support our website at sermondownload.net. Again, saints, sermondownload.net. I want you to go there in the description section, and I want you to download uh, some, of, uh, some of my pastoral sermon notes. There's hundreds of them on there. And you get to see directly into the mind of God in a way you never have. I promise you this, whether you are a PhD, THD, whether you're a Bible study, you're God's sheep, a ministry auxiliary, uh, just beginning with Jesus. I promise you, no matter what level you're at, uh, church pastor, large church pastor, small, I promise you, you're going to see into the mind of God through my pastoral sermon notes in a way that you never have before. And also, again, just go down to Sermon Downloads, and I'm particularly excited about the one-year package of sermon series uh, we put together. I put together for you three to six weeks each, a whole year of sermon series on theme topics. Uh, Lord, I'm angry. Lord, I'm uh, wore out. All sorts of sermon series that we be that I believe is going to bless your heart. Each sermon is three uh, pages of outline notes each. You, I, I promise you. You will be blessed if this blesses you, if this Sunday school lesson blesses you. My notes are just kind of a whole nother level. So go there and just to support our ministry. Amen. Uh, lesson 11 today, November 13, 2022. We are God's artwork, wisdom and enlightenment. Again, the devotional reading is Psalm 16. The background scripture is Revelation 2, 1 through 7, Acts 19, Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. And the print passage is Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. And again, the key verse is Ephesians 1 18 says, I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glory and inheritance in his holy people. A lesson aims to say, says this, deepen your understanding of God's overall purpose for us as Christ's body, the church, and experience the immeasurable gift of intercessory prayer and offer an intercessory prayer as an active demonstration of love for someone um, for whom you are thankful. Now, I, I want to focus on experience the immeasurable gift of intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer should be taken seriously at all times. Um, I saw something recently. You can't let everybody pray over you. You can't let every other believer pray over you, every relative, physical relative pray over you, or even every church leader pray over you. I uh, saw uh, someone uh, praying over uh, uh, a church or church leaders, and um, I just I wouldn't like close my eyes. I wasn't gonna go along with that because you know the Bible asks, "What fellowship has light with darkness?" Jesus said, "Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say?" Jesus said, "Many will come to me in that day, saying, Lord, didn't I preach in your name or prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many for one of works in your name?" And He'll say, "Depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you." So. This guy was interceding, and he is the one that needed to be interceded for because he's, his lifestyle is that which has been going on for, like, years. So I said that just because somebody preaches Jesus or just because somebody says they love Jesus or just because somebody tells you, ooh, child, I'm blessed and highly favored, just because somebody's a great singer in the choir, that doesn't mean that you need to allow them to intercede on your behalf. Because here's the problem. People that, that are real intercessors and in a, in a spiritual condition to intercede, the Bible says the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. Fervent, effectual, righteous. Righteous prayers are fervent and effectual. 
effectual prayers are fervent and righteous. So if that, if that person praying over you has none of those qualities, especially righteous, how are they going to avail much? Or how are you allowing them to speak over you? You wonder, we need to be careful. It was interesting when we look in the biblical record, there were some things uh, Jesus' disciples couldn't do. And, Jesus, and they said, oh, Lord, you know, we tried, but he said some things only come about by prayer and fasting, right? Because they weren't prepared to intercede for those people that uh, they were trying to intercede for. So I would say to you, don't just let no anybody intercede for you because they could be speaking curses in your life. And at word, or well, in another part of that anyway, is they're just up there running their mouth. If they if they aren't repented, reconciled, and restored, if they're living foul, I don't care from the pulpit, I don't care if they from pulpit to the back door, they are just up there talking. And it's like just because people have position in church, that doesn't entitle them to uh, anoint you with oil. That doesn't spiritually entitle them to serve you communion. That doesn't spiritually entitle them to give you intercessory prayer because they could be speaking demons and curses on your ministry in your life. Y'all better quit playing with these people. Stop. This is not a game. Introduction. Across the decades, many Baptist church worship services opened with deacons lined up before the congregation to offer prayers that rang familiar to those who heard them every Sunday morning. That's right. Many could and did mimic word for word the order of the elder deacon spread this morning. Heavenly Father, it's once more and again that your weak and humble servant is, is knee bent and body bowed before the throne of grace. Lord, bless my children, my neighbors, and generations to come. Uh, Michael's like, oh, Lord, st stop by here, Lord. Pray my companion, Lord. Uh, many of the debt generation, many of that generation without formal education knew the worth of prayer and possessed the spiritual insight uh, to look ahead and pray for those who were with them and those who would come after them. The elders knew that the younger generation would need God in relationship with him if they were going to succeed in life. Similar prayers echo during Wednesday night prayer meetings. Whether they were aware of this or not, these saints consistently engage in spiritual practice of intercessory prayer. Those who heard the same were very similar uh, prayers week after week often consider them too long and formulaic. That was never my problem. My problem is those a lot of those people up there had no business again praying for anybody because they couldn't even intercede for themselves to break that strong strongholds uh, that that were in their own lives. Let alone call out for the people of God. Y'all think y'all think y'all truly think that God is going to answer prayers just because somebody asks? Is is that how it is that how it happens? A prayer, you know, when prayer is answered, meant when the re, when when that request meets his will. That's when a prayer is answered. That request is not going to meet his will, even if the intentions were good. But that person praying isn't necessarily in his will. And enlightenment, what? Ephesians 1, 15 through 18a in his King James, wherefore also having heard of, of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you and make mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory may give uh, unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding uh, may be enlightened. And this says, math teachers consistently admonish their students to understand the fun fundamental processes of er every mathematic algorithm and operation. Students who understand the process can identify the cause of errors and correct them more efficiently. Likewise, Paul wanted his readers to understand the process of their salvation and spiritual inheritance. First, Paul laid out the basic principles of salvation in Christ, the blessings of election, sonship, redemption, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then he explained the method by which believers uh, could understand and appropriate and appropriate it all, divine enlightenment. Paul interceded in prayer on behalf of these Gentile converts to Christianity, having heard of their faith in Jesus and love for all the saints. Paul uh, continuously gave thanks and made requests to God for them. And again, saints, before we go down to the what do you think, let's talk about uh, what request you are making if you are in a spiritual condition to intercede. Welcome again, saints. It is your dearest servant, brother, Pastor Brian Dale. I am asking you right now to go to the description section of this video and click the link for sermondownload.net. We want you to take the next step. We buy, you buy devotionals, you buy Bible studies, you buy books. 
from religious leaders, all of these things, we want you to go straight to the source into the mind of God, which are pastoral sermon notes. That's where these things originate at. So you can see straight into the process and how God deals with us as we deliver our word. These are good for Sunday morning preaching. All you can do is just print and preach. They're ready to go. You can pull them up on any device, smartphone, all the way up to your tablet devices. You can also use them as Bible study content as well. Further, if you lean into that a bit further, we have a 104 sermon package where you can download 104 sermons and saints, you could turn this into books, devotionals, our notes are thorough, they're doctrinal, they're theological. We want you to go to sermondownload.net by clicking in the link, the description section of this video. So be it. When we are in a condition to, spiritual, to spiritually intercede, it's never about long and rhythmic prayers or loud prayers. Today, people don't so much rhythm rhythmize those prayers as old deacon did. They tend to yell and they tend to just start yelling like that's going to call down the power of God. Even you know, church leaders do that all the time. And that's not what it is. So my question uh, to you to challenge you is you may be in a condition to pray, but do you are you in a uh, are you in spiritual tune enough with the Holy Spirit to even know what you should pray? And I say that because a lot of times we make long prayers and the Bible even says uh, we don't even know how to pray for what we ought or how to ask for what we ought. I always use the example of uh, Hezekiah when the prophet came to Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was one of the few uh, kings in the Old Testament that actually obeyed God. And the prophet came to him and said, get your house in order because you're about to die. Hezekiah turned to the wall and he didn't make a long prayer trying to intercede for himself, telling God what uh, he needed and what he wanted, or even that he wanted to remit, uh, or live longer. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and simply said, Lord, remember me. So I ask that because effective intercessory prayer takes a humility to understand that you don't know oftentimes how to pray for what you are. For instance, I see it all the time, people in service praying for healing, that their body gets healed. What if the God, what if, what if what if he doesn't heal it? What if God doesn't even want you to pray that your body is healed, but he prays as that old song saying, Lord, don't remove my mountain, but give me the strength to climb. You asking for him to remove the mountain when, when that prayer that aligns with his will may be give me the strength to climb. Because what I have found out is that if we get out of situations too quick, we become unappreciative. Where the longer we call, craft the crawl and scratch in the storm, we become more appreciative towards the blessings of God. So again, when, I'm, when we're talking about intercessory prayer of God's chosen and even for God's chosen, be careful before I go to what do you think first, who you are allowing to intercede before you. Again, please, by the mercies of God, understand that just because somebody has position, they've been doing it a long time. Uh, they, they may even close their sermons, taking people to the cross, or they may close the prayer meeting with a strong prayer, or they may be in a position of authority over you, or they may be the head of an auxiliary, or even a choir member, mother of church, whoever it is. Just because it sounds good doesn't mean it's sincere and God's going to hear it. That, that's, that's all I'm saying. Because a fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Those are the keys. A prayer is not going to be fervent and effectual if it's not coming from the righteous. There's never, how can a effectual prayer come from somebody that's wicked, even though they call themselves a church member? You know, we as church leaders, we are we are quick to say, oh, we got a lot of pastors in the pew who won't listen. And we be doing the same thing. I've done the same thing, right? Well, I'm saying not listening. What do you think? How does Paul's request for spiritual enlightenment motivate your desire to walk after spiritual things more than pray for uh, physical uh, blessings, because uh, again, when we come into the knowledge of God's word and being mature in the faith, or what Paul even described as uh, meat versus milk, right? We, you know, Paul said, "You desire meat, but I can give you some milk because y'all can handle the meat." When we talk about that, enlightenment comes when you are mature in the faith. That doesn't mean that you arrive. And think about it like this: no matter how old you get, whether you five or fifty or eight or eighty or nine or ninety or 10 or 100, you are always in a learning process. You are mature. 
you know, the older you get, the wiser you get. And they're old fools too, I realize that. But you mature in the Lord, but you're still learning. Spiritual enlightenment comes when you are mature in the faith, and a mature person realizes in the faith, an enlightened person realizes they don't always know what to pray for. So, Lord, I'm, I'm open to learn. I'm open to listen to people. Enlightenment, why? Ephesians 1, 18b through 23, King James Version. And I'm reading NIV, verse 18 says, In order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of the glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable great power for us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fulfills uh, everything in every way. And the description says, after praying that they know God personally through spiritual enlightenment, Paul explains why this spiritual understanding is vital to believers relationship with God. First, they need not know, they needed to know anyway, the hope of their calling. The hope of his calling refers to the completeness of salvation culminating with believers' glorification and freedom from the presence of sin. This hope is more pie in the sky. The hope of glory attached to our calling should motivate us to live holier, obedient, and faithful lives now for his praise and as a witness to the law. Second, Paul wanted them to know the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. And I'll uh, I got to add to this, uh, unfortunately. So when we talk about the, the, the richness of the hope of your calling, saints, I, I hearken back to this. And those of you who have uh, subscribed to this channel, been with me for some time, know that I always talk about the hope of your calling. You cannot understand, uh, you cannot understand the hope of your calling without understanding who God created you to be, right? And we can talk about use these fancy words, salvation, sanctification, all those other things. And when it all boils down to Lord, who did you create me to be? Right? So when we talk about the hope of our call, and this says the hope of glory, we're not going to see the hope of his glory if we are not familiar with who he has called us to be and we're out there trying to act like somebody else. That was that's that's the whole issue with the struggles uh in uh, many of our ministries, especially for those who are sincere servants of Jesus is they're modeling their ministries and who they are on something they've seen instead of just strictly on the word of God. It's okay to have uh, a role model in ministry, but that doesn't mean um, that you have to become them. Let them model faithfulness, not who they are. It's okay to model faith and, and accept that model of faithfulness from somebody else, but it is not okay to try to make how you remain faithful the same as how they remain faithful. For instance, they may be somebody who has this gift of connection and evangelism with people in hospitals and intercessory prayer. They may be more gifted in that area. They may be more faithfully gifted in that area where you might be, for instance, more faithfully gifted in music, in song, in uh, uplifting people through inspirational singing, uh, through uh, serving like for, from uh, door knocking or street preaching or, or whatever that is. So faithfulness means faithfulness to your call, faithfulness to the hope of your call. You can, somebody again can model faithfulness to you, but that doesn't mean you need to become them. Be faithful in what he has called you to and who he has called you to be. Saints, because again, we talk about people living lies. We talk about people being other than what God called, uh, uh, created them to be. For instance, gay people or, tra or, or transgender people, women that think they're men, men that think they're women, this sort of thing. We talk about them trying to be something God didn't call them to be when in the spirit we do the same thing. And I, I also offered you an example some time ago of these very kinds of people. And we'll go to one of you thinking close here. Those people in uh, black churches, more traditional black churches that I, I, call, I call struggle hoopers. There are people that are naturally gifted hoopers. They just they just have it. Uh, there are preachers who are gifted hooper. Now there's also singers who taught themselves to hoop, and they yeah. There's there's like a really famous one. I feel bad for him, but whatever. That's that's between him and the Lord. But some people are some preachers are nat naturally gifted hoopers. God called them to preach, and they can hoop. Everybody can't do that. I don't do it. I used to. I you yeah. I used to tune it up a little. I used to tune it up for a little while. I stopped because it was ridiculous. I wasn't gifted at that. And I feel bad 
I feel bad when I see people doing that. You know, trying to be something, mobbing themselves on something that ain't got anything to do with anything. Because here's why they do it. Because they don't believe that they're gifting without trying to mimic, you know, some clown preacher. And they've become clowns themselves. They don't believe they're enough. That's why they try to imitate somebody else. Oh, I got to get the people riled up. No, you don't. No, you don't. I'm pastor and I ain't hooping. I, you know, I'm, I, I get intense, but I'm not doing that. And I'm never going to do it. For what? So when I try to be somebody else and I don't remain faithful to the hope of my call, I'm really calling God a liar. And I'm talking about transgender people. They're lying about who they are and we're lying about who we are. O thou man of God, judge us another and do us the same thing. How are you going to escape the damnation of God? And what do you think? As I close, how does this section, sections content challenge your focus on intercessory prayer and your understanding of your purpose as a believer? Again, intercessory prayer, I, I'm i prayerful that I have encouraged you not to let anybody lay their hands on you that you know ain't right. Just because somebody calls on the name, uh, says Jesus' name, don't mean they're calling on Jesus. How are they? How are they doing that? What, what fellowship has light with darkness? Uh, uh, I'm just asking the question. And I hope I've also expressed to you the need for you to understand that intercessory prayer is serious and there's some things that are going to obviously require prayer and fasting, but there's some things that uh, are, are strongholds that even in your life, your intercessory prayer is not going to be effective simply because uh, you are not in a right frame of mind or, or spirit or those people that are trying to speak over your life are right themselves. So you have, a with respect to intercessory prayer, don't let anybody anoint you with oil. Don't let anybody pray for you. And if they insist on doing it, you keep your eyes open and you just look at them. Because again, so many people have come expecting a move of God and they've gotten much more demonic things than they've bargained for, allowing people that they know ain't right, that ain't even trying to be repentant. You know why David was a man after God's own heart? It wasn't because David was perfect. We know he was accessory to murder, a murderer, really. And we know that David was an adulterer. You know why he was, and he sent, got, had God, he messed up. God had sent plagues on Israel for his behavior. You know why? Because David knew how to repent. Those people are not people after God's own heart if they're not repentant. And you better keep them away from you. Don't let them, I don't care what their title is, how far from the state convention they are, the district. You better stay away from that because you're going to get much more than you bargained for. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the lesson on today. Father, I just praise your holy name uh, for everything that was said here. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that we open our eyes and are sensitive to who should be interceding for us and who shouldn't, Lord, or who we should be interceding for, Lord, and who we shouldn't. And, Lord, that we get to a place where we could be spiritually prepared to uh, uh, have the fervent, affection, uh, affectionate, uh, effectual prayers of the righteous. Father God, just bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so be it. Welcome again, saints. It is your dearest servant, brother, Pastor Brian Dale. I am asking you right now to go to the description section of this video and click the link for sermondownload.net. We want you to take the next step. We buy, you buy devotionals, you buy Bible studies, you buy books uh, from religious leaders, all of these things. We want you to go straight to the source, into the mind of God which are pastoral sermon notes. That's where these things originate at. So you can see straight into the process and how God deals with us as we deliver our word. These are good for Sunday morning preaching. All you can do is just print and preach. They're ready to go. You can pull them up on any device, smartphone, all the way up to your tablet devices. You can also use them as Bible study content as well. Further, if you lean into that a bit further, we have a 104 sermon package where you can download 104 sermons and saints you could turn this into books devotionals our notes are thorough they're doctrinal they're theological we want you to go to sermondownload.net by clicking in the link the description section of this video so be it